I don't want to waste this opportunity and I want to open more opportunity to other people so they can change their life literally the way they have changed mine. Yeah. We are in the middle of catfish revolution. <laughs> do you want to be a part of it or do you want to <laughs> sit and watch? Okay. <laughs> Drop a little bit more into the backstory. Uh, how how did you get in to this line of work? How did you start working with fish? So I was born in a fish farm with the fish. Not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so I'm actually half fish and half human. <laughs> Specifically in fish, I there's actually a class in yeah. in, in the college uh, called aquaculture. Mm. And I, I was enrolled in that class not because it's aquaculture or this is uh, really interesting, but, it, but because it is a, a, a package. So one class, three credits, yeah. with that if, if you don't attend all of the class, you must be get an A. Mm. So 100% assurance that you will get an A. If you show up. If you show, yeah. Even if you don't show, show up. <laughs> so you say, your name is there, pro, your professors will give you an A. <laughs> So it's a, it's a good, and we have like a field trip to Bali at the end of the semester. Yeah. So it's the most, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very noble cause that I yeah. attend to that class. But uh, unsurprisingly, the class was very inspiring. So yeah. the, I think the professor mentioned about one story that Vietnam uh, produce a lot of catfish, mm. and, and they don't consume that many in, in domestic, so they have to export it. And when they export it, uh, to the states, uh, yeah. the U.S. government rejected it wow. because uh, they have the line of catfish. And what they did is they fillet the fish in 2009 around. Yeah. They fillet the fish and uh, skin off, and they sell it not as catfish because you know catfish is is an ugly being, right? It's yeah. a black with a mustache, so it's not very appealing to eat catfish, and it's very very popular in Indonesia. So they call it dory fish. Yeah. And they sell it. And dory fish at the 2009 was one of the best-selling freshwater fish in the in the states and the U.S. Hmm. Not many people know that dory fish is actually catfish. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it it blew my mind. And and the professor said that in five or ten years in Indonesia, the all supermarket, all the five-star hotel, you will serve dory fish, hmm. which is catfish. Yeah. And catfish was very popular, but it's cheap product. Hmm. And, and he said that. We are in the middle of catfish revolution. <laughs> do you want to be a part of it, or do you want to sit and watch? Okay. <laughs> I want to be a part of catfish revolution. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds, sounds really cool. Yeah. But it happens right now. It's the best-selling uh, freshwater fish, and you can find it all in all supermarket yeah. in Indonesia. So yeah. So you started fishing. Let's start fishing. Yeah. And did you did you finish your studies, or like I mean, did you start a company? Did you just start? Fishing with a pole and rod? Did you start a farm? <laughs> so I started my own catfish farm uh, right after that class. So I, yeah. I tried to fi find uh, some farm that is rented. So it's actually a farm like 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 a hundred square meter. Okay, uh, small. With, yeah, which is rented only uh, thirty dollar per year. Wow, it's very cheap. Oh, oh yeah, this is a good deal. Okay. Yeah. I start putting fish, and because I get an A for uh, an aquaculture class, <laughs> I, I must be good at it. You know, you <laughs> must be, it's logical. So I started uh, farming the fish, and then uh, from from that point, I had a hard a hard time to fi find someone to sell sell the fish mm. because if I, if I get to the wet market, the traditional <coughs> market, they have them. There's some cartel, fish cartel, that's actually holding off the market. Controls it. Yeah. And then if I go to the uh, fish food vendor, I can't really sell it because it's too, too small and I have to drop it. Yeah. And then that, at, from that point, I, I had to sell it to the middleman, which only give like a one cent of, uh, of what, uh, profit for yeah. every kg that, that I sell. And I only uh, sell around 130 kg. Oh. And for two months, it's not that much of money actually, oh. so it's a bad investment. But then I realized, so I have to do something about it. I, I start to fry my uh, my catfish. So, so do it a fillet, uh, fry it with some uh, bread crumbs, and then sell it in the in my campus. So I, I was actually president of student council. So. Yeah. I use my authority <laughs> to manage to force fish on everybody. Force, <laughs> you know, <laughs> our student movement will be eating. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I, I branded, so I branded Dory. Yeah. So I branded Dory, no one, yeah, uh, no, one knew. no one knew that that is catfish. So I, I actually uh, run a survey. So what fish is this? Uh, people say that, well, this is tuna, this is, a, this is a snapper. Some guy said this is salmon. I don't know if, why they thought this is salmon. <laughs> I think they nev then he never eats salmon uh, in, in his life. But yeah, because the the you know culinary yeah. uh, business is going well. From I had a small food branch, food yeah. fish uh, fried fish food branch, and then go to five, and after that uh, I uh, my farm started growing from one pond, two ponds, ten ponds, and after I was graduated in 2012, I own 75 farms. So. 75 farms. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So let's get let's get to the the problem that e-fishery is solving. How, when did you discover that fish food was an issue? Yeah, I, I think it's always there because it's, mm. it's 70 to 90% of the total cost, like the total business cost, it's, a, it's, it's the food. It's, yeah, it's the yeah. food. And initially, I because I, I just own my one farm to 10 farm, I can handle it by myself. Yeah. Uh, before I, I go to class and I feed it, after I go to class, I feed it and it's it's going well. Because I know what to do, but after, after I have some employees then, they, they don't really know what to do. They yeah. dump it. Sometimes, sometimes they even steal the fish and sell it to the other farm. <laughs> and they say, oh, the fish is eating, eating well. But, but wait. So it, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, yeah it, it happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, but when I was uh, graduated, I, I, I initially want to grow my fish farms because having 75 farmers is not that, not that much. Not that much. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think the good is then the enemy of great. So if yeah. you want to uh, farm fish, then you have to be the greatest yeah. f fish farmer ever. You have to be the king of, of catfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I tried to do so, and I, I talked to uh, one big farms on 2,000 of fish farms. Mm. It's an individual, not, not, doesn't have any leg, legal entity, don't pay any single tax. Mm. And he owns 2,000 farms, and I just asked, what's your challenge? because I want to grow it. What's your mm. story? And he tells me that this is the problem. And w because of that discussion, I, I spontaneously from on the, in the discussion, I, uh, I asked, I spoke to him that, what if I can make you a machine that you can control from your smartphone, yes. for your phone, from your phone, and it can feed your fish automatically. Yeah. And it, it is be, it'll be more efficient. Yeah. And the guy said, do you have that technology? <laughs> Well, <laughs> let's assume yes? that. No, no, just <laughs> yeah. let's assume that, that way. Let's assume the technology exists. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you came from technology university. So it's like MIT of Indonesia. But I oh. studied biology, so I don't know. <laughs> Actually, in, in his mind, someone that I graduated from Institute of Technology must, must, you know, must, yeah, must be able to build robots or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, from that uh, point, I, I, and he said, oh, if, uh, what's the price? It's around. For hundred dollar, uh, you just made it up. Just made it up. You didn't even know what it was gonna be. I didn't even know what's <laughs> what it's gonna be. So it's super popular. Okay, if it's really efficient because the feed is like two tons per, per yeah. pound. So yeah, it's two thousand pound. If it's, if it's really efficient, then all of my two thousand farms yeah. will use your technology. Huh. Wow. And and from that discussion, so wait, no one uh, mm. provides this technology, and this is one one farmer. There are yeah. three point five million farmers, fifty million farms. In Indonesia. In Indonesia, just 50 in Indonesia, million farms. 50 million farms. Wow. And if you go to rural area, you can see that all of them owns one or two commercial fish farms. Yeah. Oh, this is huge opportunity, yeah. and no one tap it to the mar to the market. Yeah. And again, because I have an aid, and I, I think I can figure it out. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so how and, you know, we don't have too much time, but how how did you figure it out? I mean, your biology background, you had an A, right, in agriculture. <laughs> like, how how did you figure out how to make an automated fishing? I, I, feeding system. Uh, yeah, as, uh, actually, I realized that I'm I'm, I'm trained as a biologist, so I know nothing to build it. But I I, I, I learned from from Google, so I googled yeah. how to build it. Uh, I was inspired by the sprinkler, water sprinkler that, mm. that you, and and used the same uh, model. I googled how to build it, how how I can find it. I I watch YouTube videos, yeah. and I buy uh, some Arduinos uh, to do that, and I, and. And because it's Arduino, you can actually, it's open source. Like you can get someone codes and put it on, on, on the library and put it. And it works. I mean, initially, it's not uh, efficient like it, like it is right now. So it's just 
the machine that you can send the SMS. And I built it using a, a scrappy uh, product when you use uh, compact disk VCD and CD-ROM to open the gate of the feed. Underwater. Yeah. Under, no, 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 above, above the water. Above the water. water. It just fell in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because the farmers don't know what kind of product, so they, they don't really know whether <laughs> it is a good product or not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an advantage. And, I, and just send the SMS and the machine will uh, spread the feed. Yeah. The feed. And after it, it's uh, close and then send back the SMS. The, you, you, your feeding succeed. Yeah. And I show it to the farmer and he, and he was blown by that. Yeah. And he said, if I went 2,000 farms, I, I, I need to put one machine to one farm. Yes, you need it. It is all SMS by one SMS for a machine. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I have to send 2,000 SMS? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So that's the thing that it is validating my, uh, my, yeah. my hypothesis that he needs it. It was, mm. was mind-blowing. So I need to find a, a co-founder, the mm. real uh, people that, that understand how to do that. Yeah. And I, I, I tried uh, to uh, start it officially right after it. Yeah, yeah. So, and now, now it has smart sensors and it's built and it's working. But how many, how many farms are you uh, working with now? 24,000 farms. 24,000 farms, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And, but still, you just scratched the surface. Uh, this will be my last question, then we'll open it up. Uh, what does success look like to you? Where do you want this to go? I, I'm not really sure what the su yeah. success lo look like to me. I, I grew up poor uh, in, a, in, a, in a slum area in Jakarta. Yeah. So it, it was a hard time and a tough time for me. But I had a childhood friend really good, really smart. And he was a, she was a girl. And we had, she, we had like the same vision that we want to grow out of this neighborhood. Yeah. So we, we dreamed that we want to go to the best uh, junior high school in, in, in that uh, city, uh, with this East, <laughs> East Jakarta. And then we succeed. We both uh, enrolled in that junior high school. But I, when the first day I, I, I was there, she didn't come into the school. And after one year, she, she never comes. And then that point, uh, in the second year, I had to move uh, to, to uh, another city. And then I had, I had a privilege to go to the college and start a fishery. And it was actually just last year after I, I win Forbes 30 under 30 Asia. And and I felt really good. I'm a Forbes. I must be a billionaire. So, <laughs> but I, was, I, I was in a good shape. I, I, I had my funding. I had my company. And I, I was, uh, I came back to that city, and I was in the bus station when I saw her, mm. and she is driving a tuk-tuk mm. at that point, and I grabbed her and I told, "What happened?" And she mentioned that her house was burned right after she was accepted in the, in the best junior high school in that city. And her house is just very nearby my house, like a like hundred meters. She is brilliant. And she told me about the horrible, horrible stories, mm. struggles that she had to do, jobs, horrible jobs that she had to do to survive until that point. Mm. And we, had, we came from the same background, right? Yeah. And we struggled with the same thing. And she, 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 is, she was more brilliant than I, than I mm. am. But, but I, you know, somehow life changed for me and not for her. Yeah. At that point, I thought that I, I'm here is because I did it. Because this is my, my I'm doing it. But it's not really. Mm. What if the fire burned my house and not her? Yeah. So I think it's, it's, again, it's part luck and part struggling. But she struggled more. So I think I just my my definition of success is really I mean, I'm here because I have a privilege, I have the opportunity, mm. and I don't want to waste this opportunity, and I want to open more opportunity to other people so they can have they can change their life literally the way they have changed mine, yeah. and that's the definition of my success. That's one of the most. <laughs>